Hi, I'm Chris Heiser from Internet2 in the University of Pennsylvania, and this is Grouper Training for the Developers and Architects Track Advanced Topics. We'll introduce the advanced topics, talk about the change log, XMPP consumers from change log, custom consumers, ESB connectors, grouper hooks, grouper rules, local entities, moving and copying of grouper objects, and the SQL interface. Um, the advanced topics sort of jump around a little bit. Um, XMPP comes out from grouper to applications. Rules, external subjects, and change log live sort of in the grouper core. Um, notifications um, go out to either an ESB or an application. The grouper change log is a system that takes grouper events from various services, UI, WS, Loader, all the different places where the API is used and stores them in a change log. Um, it orders the events so that they can be processed in order by the grouper loader on a cron uh, which defaults to every minute. And certain data about each event are stored. Um, they can be, other data can be retrieved by the registry or point in time by the consumer. So change log consumers connect um, these events to external systems and each change log consumer keeps a pointer to the latest successful process record for that consumer so that if there's a failure in processing it can be tried again or not depending on the logic in your consumer. Grouper can have an XMPP change log consumer. This consumer is basically generic so it can be used for multiple uh, systems that need XMPP notifications from Grouper. Your institution needs an XMPP server, or you need one you have access to, and you need at least one non-person account for authentication to the server. Um, and if you only have one account, you can differentiate by resource if you trust both sides to share the, the authentication. Um, basically, it's for smaller size apps that aren't going to get too many notifications um, that can get a message that says uh, refresh your cache and the grouper client can consume XMPP messages um, to help you refresh the cache. The grouper admin needs to configure XMPP in general and the specific configuration for one service that you're provisioning notifications to. So here's the config for notification on membership changes in a folder in uh, grouper loader dot properties um, basically you configure an XMPP consumer that's going to look at membership ads or deletes um, for a certain folder or subfolder and we also want to make sure there's a login ID so it's only for people and we're just going to send that to a couple recipients uh, one is a person just to make sure things are happening and one is the system that's going to be responding to the events by refreshing their cache. The Grouper changelog consumer is a Java plugin that the Grouper admin needs to configure um, and basically it's Java code that examines changelog messages and processes or ignores them. The grouper ESB connector uh, processes inbound or outbound HTTPS calls to grouper. Uh, the admin must configure these. The inbound is similar to grouper WS for certain types of events. And the outbound will send a web service message with the ESB protocol. Um, so you configure this per service, just like XMPP, you can use the same change log consumer to talk to um, different services over the ESB and they'll be managed separately and the uh, listener is on the grouper daemon, grouper uh, loader daemon. So the configuration for this uh, in this example is send all membership change events to an ESB. Um, basically in the grouper loader properties you're just going to specify for this HTTP test um, consumer, changelog consumer, it's the ESB and for any membership add or delete then you want to use the uh, ESB HTTP publisher and you can put a URL in there 
and um, an EL filter for the events, um, etc. An ESB connector sample message looks like this. It's basically a beam that can be sent, um, in this case in JSON, um, but uh, it could easily be in XML or, or whatever, that has an event and a type and um, some attributes, and in this case, uh, some subject attributes that we want to send uh, the login ID, in this case for a membership add to a group. Grouper hooks are custom Java plugins to the Grouper API that are called before or after certain Grouper events occur, for instance, when a group is added or deleted. And you can register more than one hook uh, for that type of event. The Grouper administrator needs to configure these hooks into the system. Um, they can be transactional so that if the hook fails, um, whatever action it was would fail, so you could use it for a veto. And an example is when a membership is added or removed, you might want to um, provision somewhere else or make sure something is true or whatever. And to write this, you need knowledge of the Grouper API. Rules are special attributes on Grouper objects which cause um, actions to occur in Grouper. So you need authorization from the Grouper admin to be able to assign or edit Grouper rules. And basically there are a bunch of built-in um, checks or actions that you can do and you can also make your own custom actions in um, either expression language or Java. And the admin would have to install the, the Java actions. For a lot of the built-in rules, there are daemons that all sync up the rules on a cron so that if things become out of sync with how the rule is written, the data will, um, uh, based on the cron daemon, um, be changed to follow whatever the rule is. So some examples of rules are um, a new kind of composite group. So if a user is not an employee, do not let them get added to the app users group and remove them from the app users group if they are removed from employee. And the difference between that and a normal composite is that with a normal composite, they're still in the app users group, and if they ever get added to employee again, then they would be in the overall app users group. But with this one, if they get added, if they get hired somewhere else and they're added to employee again, um, they would have to go through the same intake process to be part of the app users overall group again. Also, the performance of uh, is a little bit better since um, it's uh, real difficult to compute composite memberships. Um, another rule example is if a student is no longer in a course group for a certain course, then set, set a disabled date to the course wiki group for that student's membership uh, one week in the future. So in this case, um, the professor might not want to immediately remove the, the user from the wiki group, but give them a week um, just in case they still need to access some things or um, just to make sure. And the last one is um, uh, privileges that can cascade through folders. So if a group is created in a certain folder, assign the read admin privileges um, to another group so that there could be an admin group of a folder and all the subfolders um, uh, to make it a little bit easier to manage objects in Grouper. With Grouper, you have access to local entities, which is basically if you want to add something to a group or you want to assign permissions to something or uh, Grouper privileges, but you don't have a reference to that thing as a subject in your subject source. For instance, if your IDM um, can't support whatever you need, you can create a grouper local entity, which basically you create this object in a folder in grouper that you have access to. And this object will have um, privileges on it. So if you want to make it private so it doesn't, it's not uh, searchable by other people in grouper, you can do that. And you can control who has administrative rights to the object. Um, basically, this is intended to be used for um, system users, um, 
for instance, a user that represents a system, an application, a database schema, a non-person entity, etc. And you can also assign um, the uh, next generation attributes on these uh, local entities. Grouper supports renaming of groups or folders. So you can move a grouper folder to another uh, folder or rename it, or you can copy a group or a folder to another folder. If it's a group that's moved, it has an alternate name that the previous name um, will have the value of that of that alternate name attribute so that it's still resolvable by the old name for a certain amount of time usually until it's moved again though you should try to get clients to use the the new name and there are some options when you rename objects in grouper you can copy the privileges of the grouper folder uh, the members um, attributes on that grouper folder etc grouper has a SQL interface if the grouper admin at your institution permits you to use it, you can make SQL calls to the grouper registry. These are read-only, and the admin should give you a database ID, which is not the grouper database ID, which has select grants on certain grouper tables and views, which are documented on the wiki. And a common, common use case for this is to read large lists of memberships or privileges um, that it might be more efficient to do through SQL rather than over web services. That concludes uh, this training video. Please click on the quiz in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. Thank you very much. Please follow up on the mailing lists or info sheets, wiki, downloads, etc. Check out the Grouper demo server and look at the Grouper online training. Wiki.